Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. In Publisher, you cannot apply font formatting to a text containing object when it's been selected as an object. At that time, you can only apply shape formatting to the object even if the shape contains text. In order to apply text formatting to text contained within an object, you must click into the text within the object and then select the text to which you want to apply the text formatting. Once you have your selection made, you can click the buttons that are available in the font group in the home tab in the ribbon to apply font formatting, right up here. Now note that you can hold your mouse pointer over any button shown in this group to see a screen tip that shows the name and function of each button shown. Also note that some buttons shown, such as the Change Case button and the Font Color button, have small drop-down arrows on them that will allow you to select a choice from a drop-down menu that appears. Other buttons, such as Bold, Italics, and Underline, are simply toggle buttons that either apply or remove the formatting specified by the button. Also notice the clear formatting button, right here. That removes all text formatting from selected text, returning the selected text to plain text within a text containing shape. Alternately, if you select text within the object, you can simply hold your mouse pointer over selected text and wait for the mini toolbar to appear. You can then use the formatting buttons in the mini toolbar to apply many common formatting options. So we could go back into our text and highlight it and you'll see that mini toolbar appear when you roll your mouse pointer over it. It displays fully and it has a lot of those same options which you can apply to your text. For advanced users, you can set all font formatting options for selected text by clicking the Font Dialog Box button in the lower right corner of the font group in the Home tab of the ribbon, located right here. Now, in the Font Dialog Box that appears, you can access many text effects. You use the various drop-down selectors and checkboxes to apply the formatting that you desire. So we could go in here and change font, we could select underline for example, change the font style, change the size, you can really play around and make whatever choices you want. Now you'll notice that at the bottom of the dialog box is a preview of how the selected formatting will appear. You can then click the apply button at the bottom right over here, to apply the formatting and then leave the font dialog box open, or you can click the OK button over here to the left to apply the formatting and then close this dialog box. We'll cancel this for right now. In addition to font formatting, you can also apply paragraph formatting to selected text by clicking the buttons that are available within the paragraph group on the home tab within the ribbon. Paragraph group is right to the right of the font group, right over here. And here you'll find bullets and numbering, line spacing, paragraph alignment, and special characters. Like font formatting, you can also click the Paragraph dialog box launcher button in the lower right corner of this group to open the Paragraph dialog box. In this dialog box, you can set the properties shown on the three tabs available. We have indents and spacing, tabs, and then of course line and paragraph breaks. So you can just click those tabs and make whatever choices that you'd like, and then you would click the OK button to apply them. In addition to custom text and paragraph formatting, you can also apply predefined styles to selected text. These styles allow you to create a consistent appearance in the type of text that appears within your publication, such as title text and heading text. 
To apply a style to selected text, click the Styles drop-down button in the Styles group on the Home tab in the ribbon, right up here, and then simply select the desired text style to apply from the drop-down menu that appears, whichever one you would want. Click out of there. In the Arrange group, over here, again, on the Home tab in the ribbon, you'll find options that you can apply to the selected text within a shape, as well as options that apply to the entire shape. For example, you can click the Wrap Text drop-down to select a style of text wrapping to apply to text within a text box, right here. You can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons, located right here, in order to change the order in which the selected object overlaps with other objects on the page. Bring forward, send backward, and so forth. You can click the Align button, right here, in order to choose from one of the available alignment options displayed within the drop-down button's menu of choices. If you have multiple objects simultaneously selected in your page, you can click the Group button, located right up here. So let's go ahead and select another object, and then you can click the group button right here to group those together if you'd like. Then you could also click the ungroup button if you wanted to ungroup those objects as well. Now you can also rotate an object. We'll select that text box again. And here's the rotate button. That's a drop down. And then you select a desired rotation, or you can flip them like that by selecting those choices. You can also click the Format tab of the Text Box Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon to see other attributes that you can apply to selected text in a text box as well as to the text box itself. So here under Text Box Tools, click the Format tab right there. If you have text selected, you can click the Text Fit drop-down button in the Text group on this tab to apply a selected method of fitting text within its shape. So down here at the left-hand side is the Text group, and here's the Text Fit drop-down right here. So you can choose Best Fit, Shrink Text on Overflow, Grow Text Box to Fit, or Do Not Auto Fit, whichever you prefer. You can also click the Text Direction button to alternate the text between vertical and horizontal display. It's a toggle button. You can click the Hyphenation button, just below it, to open the Hyphenation dialog box, where you can set whether or not to automatically hyphenate the text box and where the hyphenation should occur. So you can choose to automatically hyphenate this story and then set the hyphenation zone values. Or you can click the manual button in this dialog box to manually set the hyphenation if desired. When you're finished, you just click the OK button. Now also note that you can click the format text box launcher that appears in the lower right corner of the text group on the format tab of the text box tools contextual tab in the ribbon. So right here to open the Format Text Box dialog box. This dialog box allows you to set all of the text box properties available. When you're finished, you can then just click the OK button to apply them. The Font group shown on the Format tab of the same Text Box Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon displays the same choices that you have displayed in the Font group on the Home tab in the ribbon. So you have all those same choices available here. In the alignment group to the right of that here, you can set the horizontal and vertical alignment of text within the shape by clicking a desired option. You have all these options here. You can choose to align center, align bottom center, 
align center left, and so forth. You can also click the Columns and Margins buttons to set column displays in a shape or to set the margin size. So drop downs there. Next we have the linking group to the right of that. And in the linking group, you can create a link between text boxes so that overflow text from the first text box will appear in the second text box. This allows you to continue a story across multiple text boxes on different pages, which can be useful for newsletter publications. To do this, select the first text box that contains the text that you wish to link. So we have that selected right here. After that, click the Create Link button in that linking group. Next, click on the empty text box where you want the overflow text to appear in order to create a link between the two text boxes. Arrows will appear on these text boxes once they're linked, and you can click the arrows to easily move between the two linked boxes. Like that. Once linked, you can click the Break button in the Create Link group to break a link. So we could go back up here. This is the Break Link button. Give that a click, and that will break the link. If we undo that, show you that we can also navigate between those using the buttons here. So you can navigate between those linked boxes as well. In the Effects group, right to the right of that, on that Format tab of the Text Box Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you can click the Shadow, Outline, Engrave, or Emboss toggle buttons to apply and remove those styles to the selected text. So you could apply a shadow after you've selected your text. You have Outline, you have Engrave, and you have Emboss. So let's select our text for example, and we'll click to emboss. And again, it's a toggle button, so turn it on and off like that. Next, we have the typography group on the format tab of the same text box tools contextual tab in the ribbon, where you can click the drop cap, for example, drop down, to select a style of drop cap for the selected text. When you roll your mouse pointer over it, you'll see what that does to it. Now, if the text that you selected is numeric, in this case it's not, you can use the number style dropdown to choose a number style. So right to the right of that, you can choose a number style. To the right of that, you can click the Ligatures drop-down to set a desired ligature style for the text, which can improve its readability. So you can just play around with these options and see what you like. Now, for some types of fonts, you can use the Stylistic Set drop-down to select a set of alternate character shapes for the selected text. If the font you've selected includes decorative characters, you can also click the Swash button below it to enable flourishes in the selected text. Also, for some types of fonts, you can use the stylistic alternate drop-down to select a set of different character shapes for the selected text. And really, this all depends on the font that you've selected. If they're grayed out, you don't have any additional choices, so if you see that, you'll know that you can't change that because of the font that you have chosen. And that's how you format text within the publisher application. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.